The Mediterranean Sea, stretching from the Suez Canal to Gibraltar, from the Black Sea to North Africa. At 3,900 kilometers long and 1,600 kilometers wide, it is a key location linking waters and some of the most important economies in the world. It's also where NATO's first ever operation under its key so-called Article 5 was launched against terrorist activities. Shortly after the attacks of September the 11th, 2001, NATO launched Operation Active Endeavour. Its motive? To deter, disrupt and prevent terrorists from using the key Mediterranean Sea. But Operation Active Endeavour appears to be changing in its methods, in its resources and in the kind of results it's now producing. There have been spin-offs in terms of engagement with other countries, non-NATO countries. We found ourselves uh, in uh, some uh, immigration situation uh, or a smuggling situation or uh, any kind of uh, uh, not legal uh, activity. Keeping tabs on the activity in the Mediterranean is a massive and complex operation. Every day, Operation Active Endeavour monitors the activities of over 8,000 vessels passing through the Mediterranean. That's a 400% increase on the numbers at the start of the operation. That requires an enormous level of coordination from land, sea and the air. NATO Review hitched a ride on one of the US Navy's planes which was participating in Operation Active Endeavour to see how the operation works in practice. Here we go. The flight was also designed to show Vice Admiral Maurizio Gemignani how information is collected in the airplane systems. The plane's equipment can detect and locate information from almost any ship over 300 tons in the Mediterranean Sea. All right, first citation. Sir. It's telling me that he's going 320 yep. at uh, 6.8 knots. As well as collecting information, electronic data that's been fed into the machines here, this operation has a second part, which is to go low and to look at the ships on the sea. There's two parts of that. First of all, they can identify them positively to make sure that they are who they say they are. And the second part is to let other ships in the area know that this area is protected by Operation Active Endeavour. This helps provide eyes in the sky to Operation Active Endeavour. But the data collection is only part of creating a full picture of the activities in the Mediterranean. Back on land, the Maritime Operations Centre in Naples analyses the raw data that's been collected. At present, that data is largely processed by a multinational group of expert analysts. But changes are afoot, which will help make the process lighter and more automated. In terms of personnel, what we're hoping to do with those improvements is take the personnel out of the weeds of, of looking at individual ships and um, allowing the analysis tools to do the first level automated look at what ships were interested in. More networking should mean less costs. And in 2010, with many defence budgets being cut, this is a key factor. Active Endeavour is moving on to a more network-enabled operation and away from a unit-heavy operation. Um, we're trying to strike a balance between establishing a network um, which is reasonably cost-effective but gives us the God's eye view we need. Our budget for Operation Active Endeavour is so small that it should not be cut, but indirectly for sure because uh, uh, flight mission uh, and uh, some other activities could be affected by budget reduction. And do you think that will affect the efficiency of the operation? Well, it will force us to find other ways to perform the operation at the same level with less money. <laughs> We're moving away from having assets constantly within Active Endeavour ships, uh, submarines and aircraft, uh, and to one where we use them occasionally on a surge basis to, to basically sort of flood a certain area of the Mediterranean to achieve presence and deterrence operations. Um, so in that, in that sense, yes, um, we, are, we are giving up some resources but acquiring others, uh, which I think may make the operation more cost-effective in the long run. 
Despite this, Operation Active Endeavour's effects may soon spread well beyond the Mediterranean. So here in the Maritime Operations Centre in Naples, what we have is information that's coming in from sources on land, at sea and from the air. And what it's telling us is information which looks out for anomalies, such as ships veering off course or unexplained loitering. The idea is that the information and the lessons learned from this operation could then be transposed into other operations, such as the one off of Somalia against piracy. I have no doubt at all that the ships operating in the Gulf of Aden and the Somali Basin that have participated in Active Endeavour have benefited from uh, the training, if you like, that Active Endeavour has given them uh, in maritime um, operations. Ask most people about piracy and they'll have an idea of what the problem is and what's being done. The same cannot be said of Operation Active Endeavour, but its proponents don't see this as a problem, more proof that the operation is working. The main aim is not to get publicity, but to achieve the aims of the operation and we are winning in this sense. So uh, I don't complain even if as a public affairs officer I would like to be able to show more what we are doing. Much like the policeman on the beat, one has to make the assumption that a policeman walking down a street in a crime ridden area is going to put off people from committing crime. Were he not there, the assumption has to be that crime may well be committed or to, in this case, uh, in, on the maritime situation, terrorist um, activity could be committed. So having racked up almost nine years of operation and having undergone many changes, where will Operation Active Endeavour head in the coming years? We could uh, open all uh, the maritime areas to this kind of operation as soon as uh, we completed what uh, we are uh, uh, doing now in terms of uh, to really install a network between NATO and national and international agencies. You don't know what's going on on the ground. You, you, you haven't got a hope uh, of achieving what you're setting out to do in terms of deterrence, presence and prevention. Uh, and therefore I think Active Endeavour is going to, is bound to move towards a more network-based system.